I turned my head back to the pair, watching and wondering what was going on. My sweet Sakeru. You're finally home. Mm-hmm. Of course I am. I had to save you, right? Zara smiled and kissed Matthew's forehead, slowly rising to her feet with him. As she fully stood, something in the air changed. The room became a little more peaceful and bright as Matthew turned towards me and Diana. I guess I can finally introduce you to my fiancé. She helped in saving you. Zara smiled very softly and looked at Diana, passing over me. What? I felt a little angry at being ignored, but I understood. She wouldn't expect a human to be his future wife. The princess of Lilith's kingdom is your intended? Of course, she would kind of want that, because, I mean, they're both pure succubi. What? No, no, no. Uh, not her. Before Matthew could step towards me, however, Azera's face delicately scrunched up at the sight of me. What the... Why is a human here? Huh? Mom, that's my fiancé. <laughs> Awkward. The atmosphere suddenly changed again. The air became colder and something wasn't right. Something in Azera's eyes changed too, becoming hard and vicious. A human? Yeah? <laughs> y yes? Azera locked eyes with me and I suddenly gasp and become lost in my mind, detached from my body. I couldn't move anything or speak a single word and her eyes remained their icy blue color. What was happening? Human. Who are you? Damn. <laughs> I can't believe I have to say this. Ahem. How can you control me this way? This is so rude. I'm no one. I'm an army slut used for energy and sex. What? Matthew stared at me, completely shocked at what I had said. I, however, could only stare at Azera, whose gaze continued to burn into mine. You are not expecting to be with my son. Correct. A human like me is not worthy. Dimitira Iam. Thank you, Diana. Instantly, my mind was my own again, and I released a gasp of surprise. I collapsed into Diana's arms as she reached out to catch me. Azera looked at Diana, a fence clearly written across her features. How dare you! Matthew, get away from her! What is going on? <laughs> I feel ya. I looked up and watched as Azira glared at her own son and placed her hand on his chest. Her hand was engulfed in a dark blue glow that spread to the taint on Matthew's skin. Some sort of invisible force pulled Matthew back and slammed his body into the Demon Lord's throne. Ah! She was the real menace all along. Matthew! As his body came to rest against it, blue chains wrapped around the throne in Matthew's body. The chains began to glow and tighten around him, locking him in place. Filthy human bitch! You don't belong in this world, and you will never have my son! <sighs> Mother, what are you? Your mother's not here anymore, Matthew. What? She's been connected to the Demon Lord for too long. She's gone mad. Mad? I am speaking truth! The king of the Demon World has no need for a disgusting human! What? King of the Demon World? I'm afraid you are mistaken. Oh, am I mistaken? The Demon Lord is dead, so his son must take the throne! The Demon Lord is dead. The Rebellion has usurped the throne. Your son no longer has claim to it. <laughs> the Rebellion merely paved the way for the true king to ascend to the throne! My son was always destined to take it, and your little siege helped him achieve his fate! Mother! Stop! Enough, Sekedu! The chains around Matthew's body tightened and he winced and choked out a gasp of pain. I instinctively reached out and tried to move towards him, but Diana held me back, protecting me still. Azira looked at him with a sad expression, tears almost filling her eyes. When you left, I was so alone. I didn't understand. I always asked, why? Why did my own son leave me here? You broke my heart, but then I realized it was part of your destiny! Mother! You were merely preparing to take the throne! 
<laughs> you needed to experience the human world before returning and taking your rightful place when the time was right. That's why you joined the rebellion. No, no, that's not true. I came because the demon lord cursed. Listen to yourself. You are a demon, Sakadu. You are the son of the demon lord, destined for greatness. Why are you fighting this? Matthew pulled and struggled against the chains he was trapped under, no longer answering his mother. Azera, however, turned to me and Diana, rage dancing within her eyes. You poisoned his mind. You enslaved my son! What? It wasn't true. I loved him and he loved me. This wasn't supposed to happen. Why was M Matthew's mother doing this? Was she truly insane? Diana placed an arm on my shoulder, causing me to look up at her. Don't bother listening to her. Her mind has been consumed by madness. And you, Princess of Lilith! You dare oppose this kingdom? You swore your allegiance to the heir of the Demon Lord! Yet you march here with an army bent on destroying the kingdom that you had pledged yourself to! The Demon Lord broke his promise and murdered my family while I was in the human world doing his dirty work. My vow changed accordingly. And I swore that I would see his kingdom fall. A whipped woman like you would never understand. Whipped? I merely waited for the chance to kill him so that my son could take his rightful place. Let's not forget that I was the one to strike the final blow on the bastard. I am warning you now. Stand down. The room became filled with a dark energy as Azera glared hard at Diana, her eyes glowing a deadly gold color. However, Diana seemed to be unaffected by her gaze, returning the venomous look with a cold, red-eyed stare. Such arrogance! You truly think you can stand against me? If it means finishing the job and freeing the world from madness, then yes. Azera snarled before a blue aura enveloped her form. Her eyes began to flicker between her natural eye color to gold as the room adopted an eerie chill. Then, allow me to clear the field of useless trash! Uh-oh. What I didn't expect was Azera shooting a blue and black chain at me, a large blade jutting out at the end, intent on running me through. Before I could scream, however, I was pushed back and fell onto the ground, the air in my lungs rushing out and leaving me breathless. As I managed to look up, I saw Diana standing in front of me, wings splayed out wide behind her, twitching in furious rage. The chain in question had been knocked away and vanished into the air. I won't let you touch her. Has the human world tainted you too? You're defending a human! Yet you claim that I am the one who is mad! Stop it! Quiet! With a violent wave of her arm, Azera cast some sort of black mist over Matthew's mouth. As it took physical shape, a large blue steel mask in the shape of a bird's beak formed over Matthew's nose and mouth, completely covering the lower half of his face. This is for you, Sekadu. Let me finally give you the world you deserve! Azera looked back to Diana, rage fueling her glare and the cold golden color over her irises. I will warn you now, Queen of the Rebellion. You stand against a pure-blooded succubus. Do not think you have any advantage over me. In fact, I am stronger than you can ever hope to be! Another pure-blooded succubus? I knew Diana was, but I thought she was the only one. How could there have been another? <laughs> Diana's quiet chuckle, however, broke me from my thoughts. I recognize the strong scent of lilies. At least this fight will be interesting. And may the best succubus win. Something in Diana's voice changed, shooting shivers down my spine. I recognized her tone of voice. The cruel Diana was back. However, Diana's hand reached back to me. What was she doing? Human, give me some of your energy. I don't need much to defeat this woman. Sure, if I've got any left. There you go, girl. I didn't want this to happen, but Diana needed to fight her. Zara had already enthralled me once, and I knew I was no match for her. I took Diana's hand, feeling her quickly drain some energy from my body. The taint around her form began to pulse and glow slightly at the new energy in her body, but Diana didn't hold on for long. 
Diana pulled back her hand and began to chant quietly, waving her hand in the air by my head, by her head. Enough talk! Die! At the sound of Azera's words, a volley of chains rushed out from behind her body and shot themselves towards Diana. Before they could reach her, however, Diana formed a familiar saber in her hand, parrying all of them and knocking them away from her. As they fell, the suddenly lifeless chains vanished into the ground, making Azera growl. You're too slow. All of those years under the Demon Lord's body must have taken a toll on you. You insolent bitch! Diana suddenly shot herself into the air and swooped towards the other succubus, raising her saber and swinging to decapitate Azira. However, all Diana hit was a suddenly vanishing afterimage. What? Before my eyes, Azira appeared behind Diana, floating in midair with a large chain ready to slam down on Diana's head. Diana! Diana quickly dodged to the side, knowing what my scream meant. However, the chain slammed itself into Diana's left wing, causing her to dip and fall to the ground. Her body bounced off the marble surface, and she landed on her stomach, knocking the wind out of her. Ah! A succubus relying on wings? A bit old-fashioned. You really are from Lilith's bloodline to still depend on that method! Diana snarled and looked up at Azira, gripping her injured wing. It looked broken, twitching in pain under Diana's fingers. However, the wing quickly reshaped itself and folded properly, as if it had never been broken in the first place. Diana smirked as Azera stared in shock. It may be old-fashioned, but I make it work. With that quip, Diana flew at Azera again, her wings flapping as she sailed through the air for an accelerated boost. Azera glared before dispelling her chain and flying at Diana in return, meeting her halfway. Both of the women began to brawl and swipe at each other in the air, exchanging kicks and punches, neither blocking each other's strikes or dodging them. I, however, looked to Matthew. He was still struggling against the chains around him, pulling roughly one way then another to try and find some leeway. His hands were bound to the armrest, leaving him no chance to use his power to summon anything. Let's try rescuing. I couldn't just lay there, I had to do something. I quickly jumped up and ran towards Matthew, needing to help him. However, a large barrier forced me back onto the floor. Was Azera holding me back? It wasn't fair! Maybe I can distract her, though. Matthew! <laughs> Diana and Azera finally shot away from each other, Diana landing near me and Azera landing beside Matthew. Enough fooling around! You'll never outmatch me! Just surrender! Crowing like a proud bird won't convince me of your strength. If you claim to be stronger than me, then prove it! Once more, Diana charged at Azera, zipping through the air like a bullet. <laughs> From the shadows around Diana, lines of blue chains shot forth and reached for Diana's body. What? No! Oh, come on. The chains quickly wrapped themselves around Diana's arms, legs, and encircled her neck and waist, squeezing her tightly. A choked garble managed to escape Diana's throat as the chains began to pull her limbs in opposite directions. Oh, no. My mind flashed back to the nightmare I had before I arrived. Diana was chained in the air in the shape of a star being pulled apart. However, this time it was Azera who was pulling the chains. Azera laughed hysterically as she looked up at Diana's body, seeing the result of her sneak attack. <laughs> Such a shame, Princess of Lilith! Do you not like that? I thought you wanted me to prove my strength! <laughs> what a pitiful sight you are! Is that the best you can do, Princess of Lilith? With a snap of Azera's fingers, blue bolts of lightning ran down the chains and shot into Diana's form, causing her to release a heavily garbled scream into the air. Diana, no! I had to think of something quick. I needed to save Matthew and Diana, but were both possible, especially with a barrier in the way? My mind instantly thought of Saro. He had holy magic, so maybe he had the ability to break the barrier. However, what about Matthew? What if Azera did something else to him while Saro saved Diana? Well, he's her son, so... Then I remembered that I could summon Matthew to me using his real name. What if it helped him escape his bonds? What if... We took the opportunity to save? I feel like he's already in the room with us, though. There wasn't enough time to decide. I shouted at last, calling out the first name to come into my mind. 
I'm gonna call Saro, and I'm gonna hope that summoning him works. Saro! Diana was in danger, and Matthew wasn't. I knew that his mother wouldn't hurt him, so I had to get Diana out of her predicament first. As Sarah's name reverberated from my lips, a bright light flashed through the room, causing Azira to cover her eyes and making me and Matthew turn our heads. What? Nice. I wasn't sure that would work the way it does with demons, but I'm glad it did. As quickly as it came, the light vanished, revealing Sarah holding Diana close to his body as she barely managed to stay afloat with her magic. The chains had been broken and were slowly fading away as Sarah glared intensely at Azira. She stared back in shock at who she saw. What is this? Sarah. The guard didn't reply, only intent on holding on to Diana and doing something with his spear, which he grasped in a white-knuckled grip. His body seemed to glow a white color that spread to gently engulf Diana's body in his hold. You dare lay your hands on my love! Ah! As Sarah raised his spear up like a javelin, Zara stepped back in fear. The weapon began to emit a dangerous golden color in his grasp, its aura flickering through the air. Periat, Celesti Bestia! With a strong throw, Sarah shot his spear at Azira, and she protectively brought her arms in front of her and formed a blue barrier around her body. The spear's blade slammed into the barrier and continued to push against it, trying to reach its target. The barrier was cracking as the spear attempted to pierce through it, but the cracks would seal themselves together again as soon as they appeared. Azira struggled to keep it from piercing through the barrier around her. <laughs> Diana, barely hanging on to Saro, guided them both back towards me, landing safely on the ground next to me before Diana almost collapsed. Is that you? Uh, I'm fine. However, Diana's eyes rolled into the back of her head, and forward she fell into Saro's arms. He tightened his hold on her, hugging her form to him as his eyes began to fill with panic. Diana was out for the count now. <laughs> The sound of a heavy clatter echoed through the chamber as Sarah's spear was finally knocked away and fell to the ground, no longer glowing. Azara, however, seemed worn out from spending so much energy to defend against Sarah's weapon, and the barrier around her faded away. How? How does a demon have holy magic? I couldn't believe it. The spear was emitting holy magic? Then how was Azara able to block it and push it away? The light in Azira's eyes faded as she snarled at Saro before she moved her hands in front of her body again and shot out a large blue orb wrapped in black chains towards him. It cut through the air with bullet-like speed, slamming into Saro's and Diana's bodies before Saro had the chance to look up. Ah! Crap! They both flew backwards and slammed into the far wall, landing on the ground beside each other with a painful-sounding pair of thuds. Saro! Diana! I looked back at Azera, both furious and fearful of her. Azera then sneered at me, stepping down from the throne dazed to walk slowly towards me. I felt my body freeze at her gaze. She was enthralling me again. I fought back with my willpower, trying to deny her any control over my form, but I remained as still as a statue, only able to breathe. You waste of space! Do you really think you can just claim my son? He is about to serve a higher purpose and you are in his way! Don't you see that? I gritted my teeth, fighting back harder. I could feel waves of energy rush through me, ordering me to obey her mental commands, but I refused to acknowledge them. I wasn't going to give in to her. All you are good for is being chained to a bed and milked of your energy like a good little harem girl. So much more energy would be able to sustain him for decades! I stared wide-eyed at her, feeling her energy surge in my body and seeing her smirk grow with each step she took towards me. Her eyes were glistening with sadistic rage. Maybe that's what we'll do with you. You can be my son's favorite plaything. He'll always have a source of energy. It will become powerful enough to completely rule over this world with an iron fist. How do you get to live? Would you like that? Not particularly. My mind began to flash back to the nightmare I had of Matthew staring at me with a cold, sadistic gaze and smile. I had to fight myself from shuddering as I battled against Azira's hold. Matthew will never listen to you! Won't he? I've been draining him of his willpower this whole time! He won't be able to disobey me anymore! 
My heart stopped, and I could feel Azera's hold take over as my spike of fear lowered my resolve. She was doing what? My eyes darted over to the throne, terror clutching at my heart. He was going to obey her? I looked to Matthew to see the chains disappear from his body as he slowly stood, his head down with his bangs shielding his eyes. I became wide-eyed as he slowly descended the days and began to walk towards his mother in a zombie-like fashion. This is probably the point of, like, if you didn't give him enough love, he didn't have the willpower to fight his mother, and then he ate you for forever. But if you did, he's just playing his mom now for a fool. Azira looked over her shoulder at her son and chuckled before turning back to me. Now, be a good boy and shame this- <laughs> And there it is. My voice caught in my throat as I witnessed a blade ramming through Azira's chest, making her gasp and tremble in shock. From behind her, Matthew lifted his head to reveal his tear-stained eyes. As he held onto the blade that he had impaled his mother on with a shaky grip, Azira turned her head to try and look at him. Matthew! What? I'm sorry, but I love her. My heart swelled in both love but despair. This wasn't fair to him, but it was between her or me, and Matthew made his choice. Sakuru! Goodbye, mother. Man, he had to kill two parents in one day. Oof. Without another word, Matthew pulled the blade out from Azira's body and swung it around his head, cutting a large gash into her back and forcing her down to the ground. My body became my own again as I crawled back from her falling body. Azira hit the ground and quickly went limp, lifeless at last. Matthew, however, gripped to his blade and stared at what he had done both in pain and in shame. My heart began to cry for Matthew. He had struck down his own mother, one whom he loved with every part of his being. This undoubtedly impacted him hard, and I could never know what ran through his mind. I slowly stood and walked over, standing before Matthew as he dropped his blade and averted his gaze to the side. <laughs> Matthew. I slowly raised my arms off for a hug, and instantly Matthew pulled me to him and pressed my body against his, burying his face into my shoulder. I could tell he was fighting back tears, but couldn't stop himself from letting some go, pressing his forehead against my neck. All I could do was hold him and hug him with the same amount of force. It's over now. It's over. I gently ran my fingers through Matthew's hair, trying to calm him down. Eventually, he let his sadness out, making us both collapse onto the floor on our knees, gripping to each other tightly. His fingers dug into my shirt, pressing me even harder against his chest as he wept against my shoulder. I, however, was silent, trying to take everything in. The demon lord was dead, and so was Matthew's mother. The war had essentially been won. As a soft rustle caught me and Matthew off guard, we turned to see Sarah and Diana leaning against the far wall, slowly rising and leaning on each other to remain on their feet. Well, that was interesting, to say the least. Ah, <sighs> you can say that again. Matthew didn't speak a word as he looked away from Diana. Saro guided Diana over with a protective arm around her waist as she looked down at us. Matthew, I'm sorry for what you had to do. I know. However, you saved the woman you loved. Matthew slowly turned to look at me in the eyes as I did him. As, as I did him? Oh my god, I read that completely in a different way that could be taken differently. Let's try that again. <clears throat> Matthew slowly turned to look me in the eyes, as I did him. <sighs> Still, that sentence could be written a little better. <laughs> his face was stricken with tears, but his expression became one of slow acceptance. She has been your rock ever since you met her. If you had let your mother control you, I would have killed both you and her. Ouch. As harsh as her words were, I could understand why she said them. Matthew and I stared into each other's eyes as we took in what Diana said. She was right. I loved him and was happy to have him alive and in my arms. That was all that mattered. I smiled and took his head into my hands, leaning in and pressing my forehead against his. We're alive. And we can go home now. Matthew slowly grinned and nodded, cupping my head in his hands as well. Yeah. We can go home now. 
A loving laugh bounced between us as we finally let everything sink in. We were together, alive, and, most importantly, in love. We had won, and we were going to return to the human world and be together for the rest of our lives. Ugh. I barely noticed the gagging noise Diana made behind us. Cyril, take me away from this. I'm feeling nauseous just looking at them. Oh, come now. You guys were all lovey-dovey the other day. You could just admit that you're happy for them. Ooh, called out. Hush. I don't <laughs> want anyone coming in here and finding out. I am the heartless queen of the rebellion, after all. <laughs> I can only laugh. Diana was happy for us, and apparently she had found happiness of her own. Yes. Saro, however, chuckled and guided Diana out of the room, waving his hand over the air before exiting completely. As I looked around, the room became vacant of any damage or death. There were no bodies or any trace of blood. Matthew and I were alone to hold each other and wait until the horn sounded for the war to be officially over. Matthew gently pulled me close and rested my head on his chest, resting his chin on the top of my hair. I love you. I couldn't fight the smile that painted itself over my cheeks as I nuzzled close to Matthew, relaxing at last. I love you too. It was over! The war was finally over! Tyranny of the Demon Lord had ended, but what now? Home was now possible. I think this is the whole, we have to celebrate. Yeah, and then we have to meet up with Diana. We've done this before a few, quite a few times, so. Let's follow her. Um. I don't want Sarah to think I'm coming on to her, so. I'll just say, at least I got to help bring peace here for a change. Diana smiled, nodding to me. I really was glad to help bring peace to a world. It wasn't out of pride or vanity. It was a matter of helping people clearly in need. We owe you much thanks. I'll accept your thanks when I finally get married. <laughs> oh, I had almost forgotten. I tilted my head at her. What was she talking about? Diana lifted one of her hands towards the sky and waved her hand through the air, making a soft purple mist glow around her fingers. Within seconds, the mist morphed and formed itself into a lavender-colored lily resting peacefully between Diana's fingers. She brought it down and presented it to me with a kind gaze. A gift, my dear. A gift? I slowly took the flower out of Diana's hands and inspected it visually. It was light, but I could feel a soft glow of magic emanating from the stem and petals. The bloom reminded me of a human world lily, but something about it seemed otherworldly. A flower known only to demons of Lilith. We call it the flower of Lilith, because these flowers were said to have been created when Lilith first appeared in the Abyssal Plains. I stared at Diana, not understanding why she was giving me such a gift. She chuckled at my confusion and leaned against the railing, continuing her explanation. It is also a flower we succubi use when we marry. Are you gonna use one when you get married to Saro eventually? Use? What do you mean? Diana chuckled again before she gently took the flower from my hands and tucked it behind my ear. As it settled against my ear, I felt mist circle my head and form into a flower crown of lavender lilies. The way Diana looked at me made me feel like I was in my bridal wear already. A human you may be, but Lilith would have been proud to see you marrying one of her own. These flowers represent her blessing, and may only crown the worthy. I felt a blush run across my cheeks. This was a blessing? I slowly reached up and ran my fingers along the flower crown adorning my head, feeling the soft petals against my fingertips. They were almost pulsing with energy. I felt both flattered and honored that a simple flower felt that I was worthy enough to crown my head. Diana let out a sigh and looked back to the sky, making me do the same. One would have expected the sky to be full of smoke or smell of a war's aftermath, but the sky was clear and fresh air drifted through my nose as I inhaled. It was indeed another world, and tonight was my last night in it. Well, you did it! Yay! Congratulations! You've made it to the end of your story. I have to say, I am very surprised at how it turned out. Give me that rundown, Kay. Nevertheless, I'm glad things worked out in the end, whether it was for the better or otherwise. I never imagined that Matthew's own mother would go crazy and turn on him, at least the demon lord got what he had coming to him. 
Yeah, who would have thought she was the final boss? Anyway, Matthew's completely free now, and you got to return to the human world in the end. Anyways, you've been through a lot, so why don't we skip to... Huh? You want to know what happened after the war? Well, I mean, I, I guess I could tell you. Yeah, I gotta know if Sarah and Diana finally got married. After the war was finished, the entire rebellion celebrated. Word spread far and wide about the rebellion's success, and soon every kingdom in the Abyssal Plains had become united with the new authority. You would think demons would be more hostile towards each other, being demons and all, but the threat of the Demon Lord was what brought the entire world together. The entire world united under one banner, the Lilith Crest. Diana became the sovereign of the entire plane, accepted and loved by practically everyone because of her devotion to the world and her bravery in the war. And... Thanks to you, Whoa! she was finally able to find true love in the form of a tainted Nephilim named Saro. <laughs> Saro. True love prevails. Oh, crap. I shouldn't have let that one slip. Oops. <laughs> it's all right. I played that extra episode. Anyway, huh. when they bound their souls yes. together in marriage, he became king of the demon world. However, it was just a title to him. The real power belonged to Diana. I'm sure he didn't mind. Diana became one of the most beloved rulers in all of Demon World history. Her natural heart of gold led her to lead the world to a prosperous future, one filled with peace and happiness. The other rebel leaders supported her, eventually changing the caste system of the world and slowly working their way towards a plane as equal and peaceful as it could be. Diana had her suspicions, of course, as any monarch would, but if they had any sort of bad thoughts about her before, they certainly didn't during the recreation of the world. And I believe that is everything that happened after... well, except for your story, anyway. Mm-hmm. Matthew and you went back to the human world and had a peaceful night in your bed before <laughs> moving on and getting married! Huh? Uh, how do I know? <laughs> well... I have my ways. Maybe you should check it out. I will, I will. Okay. Click. The wedding day, which was rescheduled without issue, became as perfect as I imagined it to be. The ceremony was perfect and the reception was filled with food, cake, streamers, and everything a perfect party should have. Our night became filled with both excitement, fun dancing, and a feeling of perfection as the realization of everything hit me. I was at last married to the man of my dreams. I could go on and on about the wedding and the honeymoon, but honestly, after the war I was more concerned of living my life afterwards. Our lives exploded with possibilities after we officially became husband and wife. Matthew helped escalate the Anderson Toy Company to new heights with his brother and became a head designer for toys. He began to pump out idea after idea, becoming a master toy maker like my grandfather was. As for me, I began to go through my own success in life, dedicating myself to becoming exactly what I wanted to be. After all, my husband was being a master toy designer. If I put the same amount of work in as I did in the demon world, then I was going to be okay. However, there was never a day that went by that I didn't think about what was happening in the Abyssal Plains. It was a heavy chapter of my life. One that tested the love between me and Matthew. The memories of our final fight with the Demon Lord and Azera still hunted me, haunted me slightly, but it only showed how passionate Matthew was with keeping me safe and remaining as my own. I was blessed to have him as mine after everything we went through. Still, I was confident that we would get through it and stay together no matter what came our way. Demon, devil, whatever, it didn't matter to us. We were unstoppable together. A moment to myself was all it took to remember everything that went on during my time in the Abyssal Plains. It was a heavy part of my life and chapter I would never forget for as long as I lived. Still, there were some fun moments while others only proved to me how strong I was and how strong the love me and Matthew had was. It was a blessing in disguise. I sat at the dining room table looking over the multiple photos that were taken from our wedding. There were so many goofy smiles, embraces, and tear-jerking moments that spanned through every picture. 
I felt myself grinning at the sight of each one, remembering vividly each moment as it was shot and captured in nostalgic euphoria. I almost wanted to go back in time and relive it all over again just to feel the emotions run through me once again the first time through. I hear ya. What do you think, Simon? I was just thinking about Simon. I'm like, Simon didn't actually cause too much trouble this time around. I looked to my furry friend, pointing at an image that managed to catch him jumping for the bridal garter in his surprisingly human form. How he managed to learn that, I would never know, but I was excited to have had him as a guest instead of just my lucky charm. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, man! We didn't get to see him really, like, do his thing. Darn. Simon wobbled over from his spot, looking at the image, and gave me a silly grin. It still looked a little evil, but I had begun to recognize which of his smiles were actually filled with ill intent and which were genuine. <laughs> I slid it over to him, picking it up off of the table and handing it to him, and watching him sit back on his fluffy tail, looking at it in awe. I guess the pictures... I guess pictures were still a wonder to Simon, since they didn't move. Shaking my head, I began to slowly pile the rest of the images together, eager to store them away for the future and frame some up just for the sake of the memories. As I did, Matthew walked into the room, hands behind his back with a smile. Oh! Hey, Matthew. Hey, what you doing? Oh, I was just looking at our wedding photos. I got a bit nostalgic, you know? Matthew nodded and walked over, looking over them over my shoulder. I, however, attempted to be sly and looked over his in return to try and glimpse at what he might have been hiding behind his back. To my surprise, there was nothing there, making Matthew smirk and laugh. <laughs> Look, I know I have a nice <laughs> book, but you don't need to try and sneak a peek at it, okay? Darn. Called out. Oh my god, Matthew. I gave Matthew a playful slap on the shoulder as both of us began to laugh wildly at the joke. Matthew was the first to calm down, wrapping an arm around my shoulder and continuing to look at the pictures. <laughs> Man, it's been like, what, a couple months since the wedding, right? Yeah. How time flies. I laid my head on Matthew's shoulder, letting my emotions drift into a state of calm and serenity in his half-embrace. With a chuckle, Matthew lowered his head and kissed the top of my hair before nuzzling it with his cheek. I still remember it. Oh, I was so nervous saying my vows. Me too. It was like a dream from long ago. Both of us reveled in the memory of us exchanging vows and saying, I do, to one another. I could feel the rush of happy realization wash over me as I affirmed to myself, Matthew was my husband. Matthew grinned before kissing my temple and standing up straight, placing his hands behind his back once again. When he brought them forward, I was shocked to see him bring around a gift box, beautifully wrapped and tied with a bow. H huh? Matthew, what is this? Something that I think you and Simon will like. Me and Simon? Oh no, did he make Simon a, t a, girl's, a girl squirrel? <gasps> Please. Simon perked up at the sound of his name as I straightened up in my chair, now beyond curious of what was in the box. As Matthew slowly unwrapped it, I gasped at what popped out of it. Another doll? Oh, she's so cute! <laughs> Yay, Simon got a girlfriend! It's about time. Man, Norn was bugging you for an entire year. It only took you two months with Angel. Bursting from the now open top was a fluffy doll that looked almost like Simon, but with a bow on its head and a cute curl in its fur. I looked around and hopped onto the table, skittering over to Simon. <laughs> of course, Simon brandished his toy knife, but stopped as the doll came up close and sniffed at him, grinning at him and hopping around him excitedly. A couple of sniffs from Simon caused him to do the same to his new friend. I figured, since we're married and stuff, maybe it was time to get Simon a playmate of his own. You know? I know. I smiled as the two furry dolls bounced around each other, now excited for their new company, and stood walking over to Matthew. He lowered the box and wrapped his arms around me, grinning down at me as I nuzzled my nose to his. You are the absolute best, you know that? <laughs> I do my best for you. Matthew raised his hand and brushed a strand of hair behind my ear before cupping my cheek. I felt his warmth radiate from his hand, causing me to lean into it and smile. I love you, Matthew. I love you so much. I love you too. 
more than anything. And I'll always be here with you, working to keep a smile on your face. I couldn't stop my smile from growing before leaning in and kissing Matthew lovingly, feeling him kiss back with the same amount of love and passion I had. He would always be here with me, and no one would be able to take him away. I would be here, arms wide open for him, and I would fill him with my love for as long as I lived. And that was my perfect happily ever after. My love for you is endless. We did it! We got the Matthew good ending. Phew! What a relief. Poor Norrin, though. She had to put up with, that, uh, with bugging him for a year. I didn't even think of it. And he's like, I think so much I have a playmate. Dear, oh dear. Oh, I actually liked Matthew's route. Wasn't my favorite, but you know what? It was okay. <laughs> it wasn't too bad. I like that him and Angel actually interacted and talked about stuff. That was really good. So, good on you, Matthew. Being sweet as you always are. Uh, so Matthew has two bad endings that we need to do, and I heard that at least one of them is, like, the worst, so prepare yourselves, guys, if you're gonna watch that. I need to prepare myself, for sure. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Matthew's route, and hopefully I'll see you guys later. So, until next time, I shall see you later.